morning, family, and Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it on this now day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and gather everyone around the Christmas tree and the TV. Go ahead and gather everyone around the smartphone as well as your laptop and let people know on Facebook, let people know on Twitter, let people know on YouTube. Let everybody know on our website, ACKaleen.org, that there is a worship encounter for you today. So come on, let's share this. Because in this time that we're gathered together virtually, we're believing God for miracle signs and wonders. Listen, if I didn't introduce myself to you, I'm Pastor Rod J. I'm pleased to be the pastor of Anderson Chapel here in Colleen, Texas. And wherever you are, I would also love to be your pastor. So come on, let's get ready to worship God in spirit and in truth. Well, are you all ready to give God some praise on today? Wherever you are, go ahead and make some noise. We came to glorify the name of the Lord in here on today. We came to give God praise wherever you are. Come on, stand wherever you are. Turn your music on up. We're going to party a little bit. Is that all right? Let me see you move. Come on. Everywhere 
Father, we glorify your name because you are the center of it all. Your love is all around us. And so we are grateful we can see your love. It never fails. It never gives up. And so we glorify you, oh God. What a wonderful and mighty God that we all serve. Come on, wherever you are, just go ahead and lift your hands and begin to honor the Lord with your mouth. Begin to tell him how awesome he is and how great and how marvelous and how kind he is to you. I love it. It just simply says this. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, everybody, let me hear you say, Jesus. Jesus at the center. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be Jesus. Come on, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. I'll make this personal declaration Jesus be Jesus be everything everything Jesus. Jesus the center of the old the center of Jesus at the center of it all. Come on. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus be the center of it Jesus all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end. From beginning to the end. It will always be. It's always been you, Jesus. It's always been you, Jesus. Nothing else matters And nothing in this world will do You are the center of Everything revolves around you Jesus, you Jesus, you 
Come on, somebody just open it and say, Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, it's something about the name of Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Power in the name of There's healing in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. My safety in the name of Jesus. Jesus was born. We got good cheer. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. That's all I had to say. My little light, my little light shine, for a special reason to celebrate Christmas season. Merry Christmas, everyone. Do you know about God's only son? Angels told about his birth to the shepherds down on earth. Animals bowed their heads down low to honor the baby long ago. Wise men came to worship him, bringing gifts to Bethlehem. I may be, sh I may be small, but I'll do my part. I am going to give Jesus all my heart.
thank God on this morning for all that we have experienced. Thank God for our youth. Thank God for all who participated today. To God be the glory. I'm praying that even now you are preparing for this word that God has in store for us. Thank you in advance for sharing this word. Listen, there's a quick message that God has in store for us. And that's coming from Luke chapter number two. Luke chapter number two. And we will uh, meet up with the Holy Spirit at verse 13. Watch this. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And all of God's people said, amen. Y'all, please help me to preach from this subject. God will do what God said. God will do what God said. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, so is my word that comes out of my mouth, that it will accomplish what I sent for it to do. Whenever God places the word, the promise or the vision, when he places it in front of you or places it within you, there's a guarantee that it will be only a matter of time before it happens. It's not a question of if it will happen, but it's a matter of when. I need for somebody very quickly to encourage everybody online and tell them very quickly, it's not if, but it's when, when it comes to the promises of God. It's only a matter of time before it happens, before it materializes and before your context shifts to match the content of God's word. God has a track record of doing what God said. For instance, it was God who said to Noah, he said, go ahead and build the ark, gave him the measurements, told him specifically where to build it, told him. To then go into the ark because water is coming to where they are. And would you know it? His word came to pass. It was in Exodus that we find a man by the name of Moses who had an encounter with God. And in this encounter, he said, I want you to be my mouthpiece. And I want you to go down to Pharaoh and tell him in Egypt to let my people go after Moses tried to talk God out of using him. God then also employed Aaron. But what God said, God already made up his mind that it was going to happen. And so would you know it that what God said would happen in terms of the nation of Israel being let go that's exactly what happened because God will do what God said. And what we find in this particular text is another example of that. For in today's text where we are told in chapter two of Luke's gospel that an angel of the Lord, Gabriel, appeared to shepherds who were working the 11 to 7 night shift, if you will, in the nearby fields of Bethlehem. Astounded by the sight, the angel of the Lord tells them to be easy, brothers, don't run away. To which he then proceeds to inform them in verses. 11 and 12 of Luke chapter number 2 that today in the town of David a savior has been born to you he is the Messiah of the Lord this will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in a manger these 39 words ignited a fire of excitement and praise because first of all to say that today in the town of David a savior has been born to you suggests confirmation of the word in Micah 5 verses 2 and 4 which declares but you Bethlehem Ephrathath though you are small among 
among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock. In the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God, and they will live securely for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Unquote. This word God, this word that God gave to the prophet Micah was over 700 years prior to the angelic announcement uh, that, uh, that stayed on the hearts and minds of those of the Jewish faith who were in a state of pet perpetual or never ending expectation for hundreds of years generation after generations pass down the expectation that what God declared will happen and this is a great place to parenthetically assert that one of the best gifts that you can give to the next generation is the testament of your faith that's one of the best gifts that you can give to the next generation is the testament of your faith that that what has carried you that what has kept you that what has guided you what has pushed you that what has convicted encouraged inspired and empowered you was the faith that you have in the word that God has spoken over your life that he even when you pass from this side to the place of victory, the legacy of your faith won't die because God's word never has an expiration date, which is why Isaiah declared in Isaiah 40 verse 8, y'all know this by now, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever and because God's word stands forever the faith that you have in that word can break the generational curses that that word can cause for the favor that you have to grow exponentially throughout generations to come that the word can make the enemy lose every time he attempts to attack your family both present and future because everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God God shall re not return to him without accomplishing what he sent for it to do. And can I help somebody very quickly to tell you that there is a word over your family. Hallelujah. There is a word that cannot be found under the Christmas tree, but there's a word that God has spoken to your great grandparents. There is a word that God spoke to your ancestors that's still carrying on to you and will not only live through you but it will live beyond you so whatever it is that God said know that it's going to happen as a matter of fact go ahead and text somebody text online and say it's going to happen some things will happen now but there are some things that won't happen in your lifetime but there's a word that you're passing Passing on to those who are ahead of you that won't die with you but it's still going to happen that prosperity is still going to happen that that next level is still going to happen that you being the lender and not the borrower being above and not beneath is still going to happen and all things working together for the good of them who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose is still going to happen and since it's still going to happen can we take a quick 15 second praise break online and thank God for the fact that if God could promise something 700 years ago in Micah and send an angel to the three shepherd men to the three wise men and tell them that what I said 700 
hundred years ago is getting ready to happen now then what God told you last week what God told you last month what God told you last year what God said to your grandparents what God said to your great 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 grandparents is still going to happen because if God said it then you know it's going to happen the angel of the Lord confirms the word of Micah but then the angel also conveys the process of God everybody say process the process of God notice the timing of the angel Gabriel's declaration it was not until after Jesus was born that the angel of the Lord then appeared to the shepherds to alert them of what had transpired. Watch it. In other words, there was a 36 to 40 week process that needed to take place first before the amazing news could be revealed. There were some development and inner nurturing that needed to happen first before it could be revealed. And uh, let me quickly, let me help you quickly uh, to understand that now is not the time to get frustrated with process. For the process is developing you in order for you to be able to handle what God's word desires to accomplish in your life. Uh, I know it may seem like everyone is just bypassing you. Everyone is overlooking you or, or underappreciating you. But let's be clear. God is processing you in order to perfect you to fulfill what God is qualifying you during your preparation process to give birth to. My God, ladies and gentlemen, this text shouts me because this baby that is wrapped in clothes has an expectation on his life to be the Messiah. This now is why later the wise men in Matthew's gospel from the east, perhaps from the Gentile province of Parthia, traveled to Jerusalem because the star indicated that something significant had happened. And, and, and can I say this, that for the last 12 months, there have been signs, both significant and minute, that have let you know that something significant is getting ready to happen in your life. You don't know how to explain it. It. you can't put a finger on it all you know is that you've been feeling for the last several months that something is getting ready to happen there's a small sign over here there's something that somebody said over there you thought that God forgot about you but then God sent a total stranger to say something to you to quicken your spirit and all that you know is something great is getting ready to happen something big is getting ready to happen can I tell you that now is not the time to dilute that feeling it's not the time to ignore that feeling but now more than ever it's time to ignite that feeling and embrace that feeling because God is getting ready to blow your mind God is getting ready to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask a thing according to what God has put in you, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what's indicating to you that something is getting ready to happen. That's why you've been strolling, you've been scrolling rather through different jobs because you know that there's something greater that's getting ready to happen. That's the reason why you've been reading more, you've been praying more, you've been dreaming again you've been envisioning again you haven't even let some people know but you started writing the vision again and making it plain because you know something is getting ready to happen in your life the wise men started asking within the region where is the one who has been born king of the Jews we saw his star when it rose and we have come to worship him watch verse 3 when King Herod heard this he was disturbing all Jerusalem with him I'm in Matthew's gospel now when he had called together all the pe people's chief priests and teachers of the law he asked them where the Messiah would be born they said in Bethlehem Judea they replied but this is what the prophet has written 
written, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Then Herod secretly asked the Magi to please find out the exact location of this Messiah so that I can come and worship him myself. What they found out later is that Herod actually had an ulterior motive. He was so insecure in himself that once he found out the location that he was then going to kill, what he was going to kill the baby. But can I tell you that because of the call, that because of the anointing that because of the purpose and the assignment on that baby's life which is the messianic move or the messianic authority the messianic promise which is the messiah that because of what the lord god was going to do through jesus god had already caused for protection and burial walls to be placed around this baby so that no matter what comes it will not prosper you already know where I'm going when I tell you that no weapon formed against the word that has been released over your life is going to prosper hallelujah and really can I tell you and can I help you very quickly by understanding that listen the devil only has the power that you give him The devil only has the power that you give him. He cannot do anything to you, number one, because God is protecting you. But then number two, because greater is he that's in you than he, meaning the devil that is in the world, which then suggests to us, people of God, that there's really nothing he can do to us unless we allow him to come in and begin to inflict the drama and the distraction that he wants the inflict but can I help you very quickly by understanding that now is the time in which you start embracing the word and stop embracing worry that you embrace his word and stop embracing the noise as you embrace his word and stop embracing doubt if God told you it's going to happen then God is going to protect that word God is not going to allow anything to happen to that word God is not going to allow anything to happen to you until what God said will be accomplished in your life and when it happens watch this the devil is going to be where he already is he's already in a posture of defeat so when the word comes to pass he's still going to be defeated God is going to be exalted and you are going to be edified I came by way of the Holy Spirit just to tell you that just like there's a word that was given to the three magi that took over 700 years to come to pass and even though there were things that were trying to stop the word that God gave from coming to pass can I tell you that his word will not fail and God will you do what God said he would do because not only did the Messiah need to be born but he he needed to grow he needed to be baptized the Holy Spirit needed to fall upon him they needed to hear the word that this is my son in whom I'm well pleased he needed to raise the dead he needed to heal the sick he needed to cause for the blind those who were blind for their sight to recover he needed for the lame to walk he needed for people to give him the glory and he needed for Jesus to go to the cross and for him to die so we can declare that he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of his peace was upon us and by his stripes we are healed but somebody shout that's not how the story ended three days later he got up with all power in his hand based upon what he said was going to happen for in John 16 verse 33 is says you will have trouble in this world but be of good cheer 
I have overcome the world. And this is what Jesus was declaring to the disciples and what Jesus is declaring to us today is that I've already overcome. The word is already released. The battle is already won. The victory is already yours. So walk in what I've already given you. Go ahead and embrace what I said already belongs to you. That will be carried down from generation to generation. If God said it's going to happen, then it's going to happen. So don't worry about about what the enemy is trying to do to you if God be for you then who can be against you the word that God has declared and released over your life will happen my God no matter how long it takes God is in the process of processing us so that we can then be ready for what God wants to release. I need for everybody to lift your hands in your home. Come on, everybody on your couch. Come on, everybody at your, at your dining room table. Come on, wherever you may be, go on and lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lift it now. Watch this. You're lifting that. Your hands is a sign that God, I'm ready for the release. Hallelujah. There's a release. Here is the gift from God on this Christmas day for you that there is a release. Hallelujah of peace. Hallelujah. There's a release of hope. Hallelujah. There, there is a release of joy. Yeah. There is a release of love that God is releasing into your family. You know that you no, 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 no. There is no more depression. I'm releasing joy. Go ahead. Come on and receive it. No, 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 no. We're not going to fight each other anymore. I'm releasing love. Come on and accept it in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. As the tears are falling on you, falling from your eyes. Come on and lift your hands again. God, today, every person with their hands lifted is a sign of surrender. They're ready for the release. So God, blow God. Blow on them now, God. Blow on them now, God, and release what you said already belongs to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God the glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, my family, wherever you are, I want you to know that it will happen. It does not matter. It does not matter what is in front of you or what you're facing. It will happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. I'm a believer of that. I know it to be true because things are hard. Things are difficult for some of us. We're finding ourselves pressing like we've never pressed before. Why? Because you're on the precipice of receiving what God said is yours. God has to strengthen your muscles of faith. Strengthen your muscles of hope. Strengthen your muscles of trust and security so that God can release what God said is yours. Can I tell you today that salvation is yours? Salvation is yours. I am offering you an opportunity to receive the best gift that you could ever receive on the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And that's the gift that he died so that we can receive, which is salvation. He wants you to receive this gift today. It is not a gift that you have to earn. No, Jesus already paid the price. He just wants you to receive it. So if you are watching and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do me this favor. I want you to please indicate in the chat that I want to be saved. I also want you to go ahead and type this number, 254. Uh, go ahead, please, 690 Zero zero seven eight. Go ahead and do that now. Two five four six nine zero 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 seven eight. I want to talk to you personally. Yes, I do. If you have not given the Lord your life, I want to lead you to Christ personally today, wherever you may be. Come on. We're expecting God to do great things. And it happens, first of all, by you saying yes to Jesus Christ. So wherever you may be, my brother, my sister, we want to say to you, congratulations and thank God for coming into the greatest movement in the world and in the galaxy known and unknown, which is the Christian movement. I also want to 
also open up the opportunity for you to connect with Anderson Chapel, where we are worshiping virtually today. We have a virtual campus of which you can be a part of. You're not in the Colleen Metroplex area, but you want to connect with this ministry. Please go ahead and tell us, indicate, I want to connect today. I want to connect with AC. Let us know. So we can celebrate with you. Let us know so we can celebrate with you even now. God bless you. And you can also call 254-690-0078. Thank you so much. Family, I want for you today to enjoy your Christmas holiday knowing that Jesus is indeed the reason for this particular season. And know that the gift, hallelujah, that God wants to give you. Is the gift he already spoke over your life before the foundations of the earth, before you were even born. He's spoken into existence. It's yours. He's just preparing you to receive it. Now go ahead, lift your hands and get ready for the release because it's yours. We thank God for the word that we have received. We're grateful now for the opportunity to respond to God's word, even virtually. There are many ways in which you can give. But before we do that, there's a testimony that someone wants to share with you. God bless you and be blessed by this testimony. So some years ago, I was a young kid fresh out of high school thinking I was ready to take on the world and uh, make a lot of money. I was wrong. Um, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't educated in finances and I did not regularly tithe. We were still going to church, um, but I was so financially illiterate that I didn't think, you know, that I, I could tithe. Um, it got so bad to the point where I had $2 in my bank account and I just didn't know what to do. Then one day, my wife brought me to Anderson Chapel where they talked about tithing. And I thought it wouldn't hurt, I guess, to give God what's his. I didn't really know if I believed in it, but when I did start tithing on a regular basis, I noticed our bank account was growing and we were getting better financially and we were educating ourselves and we were properly managing our money to the point where our bank account has grown exponentially and we've been blessed with multiple opportunities for our continued financial success and advancement and we are truly blessed for that. Thank God for that testimony. I'm telling you, you cannot be God's giving no matter how hard you try. Listen, there are many ways in which you can give. I pray that you please take advantage of that. Uh, we have our cash app. That's a dollar sign A-C-A-M-E-C. -E you can also give uh, via text 73256. And in the message line, uh, asking you to please put A-C and then the amount that you are going to give. Also, you can give through Zelle. Praise God. That's very quick. Just go to your bank account. There's a Zelle option. Uh, and please enter an info at AndersonChapelColleen.org. And I thank you so much for your giving. For those who are connected to Anderson Chapel, we have a Realm Connect app where you can also give securely. For those on our website, please go to uh, the uh, giving option where you can give securely. Those on Facebook, please do the same thing. If you didn't access or take advantage of Cash App or you don't want to take advantage of text to give, but you want to give uh, securely through our website, please go to ACKaleen.org where you can also give securely. And also, uh, if you say, Pastor, I'm just not there yet. I, I want to make sure that the mail goes through. Uh, you can also give the P.O. Box uh, 1177, Colleen, Texas, 76540. To God be the glory. Thank you so much in advance for your giving. I am celebrating with you as you continue to trust God with God has entrusted you with. And I promise you that God will exceed your expectations. To God be the glory. Also, I want to remind you that we are now uh, at the end. This is the last Sunday of 2022. 
And the word has already gone out as it relates to thank God for blessing me for 365 days. And so I'm asking you to go ahead and participate in that December 31st or by the 1st of January for 365 days. God has been good to you. So let's respond to that. You can give three dollars and sixty five cents, thirty six dollars and fifty cents, three hundred and sixty five dollars, three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. All the way up to 3.6 million. If you want to give more to God, be the glory. But at the end of the day, we always every year we do this. We always respond. We always tell God, thank you so much for how you have blessed us. So thank you in advance for your giving as we close out, close out this year in strength, close out this year in victory. Looking forward to what God has in store for us in 2023. Family, I, I want to pause because I understand that there are many who have lost loved ones, who have experienced loved ones transitioning from labor to reward in 2022. It's heavy, it's hard, and it is hurtful. However, I want you to know that the hand of God is there with you and for you. I want you to take advantage of all the help that God has in store for you that's available for you. If you need counseling, I'm telling you, I'm asking you, please go and get it. If you need to talk to somebody, there are people who God has put in place besides myself. Of course, I'm available to talk to. But whatever you do, don't give up. There's a song that says don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. So in the midst of your tears, keep pushing. In the midst of your pain, keep living. Even if you find yourself still angry with God, don't give up on God because God is not gonna give up on you. And know that in due season, God is going to help to bring you through this. So as you're grieving, as you're crying, and as you're mourning, know I'm here with you. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. It has been my pleasure to worship with you and your family. Your family is really my family and my family is your family. So we all gather together today to worship God. Now go ahead, enjoy yourself. If you haven't opened up the gifts, please do so. But know more than anything else, this whole day is because of Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that God could ever give. So this is not the time to have an attitude because you didn't get what you wanted. <laughs> but this is the time to instead thank God for the gifts, not only of Jesus, but the gift of family, for the gift of love, for the gift of connection. Even if there are persons who have transitioned from labor to reward, God will never leave you and God will never forsake you. Come on, let's receive this benediction. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make each and every one of you perfect to do his good work, working in you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore, all of God's people said, amen. <laughs>